We continue today with chapter 26, The End of Injustice. What then remains to be undone for you to realize their presence? Only this. You have a differential view of when attack is justified and when you think it is unfair and not to be allowed. When you perceive it as unfair, you think that a response of anger now is just. And thus you see what is the same as different. Confusion is not limited. If it occurs at all, it will be total. And its presence, in whatever form, will hide their presence. They are known with clarity, or not at all. Confused perception will block knowledge. It is not a question of the size of the confusion or how much it interferes. Its simple presence shuts the door to theirs and keeps them there unknown. What does it mean if you perceive attack in certain forms to be unfair to you? It means that there must be some forms in which you think it fair. For otherwise, how could some be evaluated as unfair? Some, then, are given meaning and perceived as sensible, and only some are seen as meaningless. And this denies the fact that all are senseless, equally without a cause or consequence, and cannot have effects of any kind. Their presence is obscured by any veil, that stands between their shining innocence and your awareness that it is your own and equally belongs to every living thing along with you. God limits not, and what is limited cannot be heaven, so it must be hell. Unfairness and attack are one mistake so firmly joined that where one is perceived, the other must be seen. You cannot be unfairly treated. The belief you are is but another form of the idea you are deprived by someone not yourself. Projection of the cause of sacrifice is at the root of everything perceived to be unfair and not your just deserts. Yet, it is you who ask this of yourself, in deep injustice to the Son of God. You have no enemy, except yourself, and you are enemy indeed to him, because you do not know him as yourself. What could be more unjust than that he be deprived of what he is, denied the right to be himself? and ask to sacrifice his father's love and yours, as not his due. Beware of the temptation to perceive yourself unfairly treated. In this view, you seek to find an innocence that is not theirs, but yours alone, and at the cost of someone else's guilt. Can innocence be purchased by the giving of your guilt, to someone else? And is it innocence that your attack on him attempts to get? Is it not retribution for your own attack upon the Son of God you seek? Is it not safer to believe that you are innocent of this and victimized despite your innocence? Whatever way the game of guilt is played, there must be loss. Someone must lose his innocence, that someone else can take it from him, making it his own. You think your brother is unfair to you because you think that one must be unfair to make the other innocent. And in this game do you perceive one purpose for your whole relationship. And this you seek to add unto the purpose given it. The Holy Spirit's purpose is to let the presence of your holy guests be known to you. And to this purpose nothing can be added, for the world is purposeless except for this. 
To add or take away from this one goal is but to take away all purpose from the world and from yourself. And each unfairness that the world appears to lay upon you, you have laid on it by rendering it purposeless, without the function that the Holy Spirit sees. And simple justice has been thus denied to every living thing upon the earth. What this injustice does to you, who judge unfairly, and who see as you have judged, you cannot calculate. The world grows dim and threatening. Not a trace of all the happy sparkle that salvation brings can you perceive to lighten up your way. And so you see yourself deprived of light, abandoned to the dark, unfairly left without a purpose in a futile world. The world is fair because the Holy Spirit has brought injustice to the light within, and there has all unfairness been resolved and been replaced with justice and with love. If you perceive injustice anywhere, you need but say, by this do I deny the presence of the Father and the Son. And I would rather know of them than see injustice, which their presence shines away. And from the workbook, Lesson 209, I am not a body, I am free. For I am still as God created me. I feel the love of God within me now. The love of God is what created me. The love of God is everything I am. The love of God proclaimed me as His Son. The love of God within me sets me free. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me.